Hi, my name is Tim Holley. Today is September 11th, 2015, and I'm going to be demonstrating some of the capabilities of a relatively new package called the GTK Utilities. Um, we're going to, this package is for, uh, let's say, a developer-oriented package intended to help make some of the things that you have to do in developing graphical user interfaces easier. It's built on top of sort of the main big package, which is GTK. We're going to be using that package. If you use the short names, the names are, well, shorter. Uh, and then we are, of course, going to be using GTK Utilities itself. Anytime you're doing low-level graphics, which is what we're up to today, you often want to use the graphics package. Um, and then finally, um, we're going to be displaying a test image, so we'll use the test, uh, the test uh, images package and images. So we'll make use of all these packages. We're going to load the data, and I'm going to use just the famous cameraman image for today's demonstration. Um, because all these are low-level utilities, uh, GTK doesn't know about the images package, for example, so we're just going to extract the data portion of the image, getting rid of all of the metadata. And so there we have that. Just a grayscale image we're going to be taking a look at. All right, now let's do some uh, graphics here. So the first thing we're going to do is create canvas. The canvas is what we're going to be rendering our um, image onto, and so we create the canvas. Um, if you've not done any drawing with GTK before, you'll um, you know this will be new to you. You'll see all these different properties that you can assign to the to the canvas that gives you a lot of customizability. But we're not going to be worrying about those today. Let's also create a window in which to house this um, canvas, and so that's the canvas is going to go into the window. And let's give the uh, um, window a name as well. So cameraman. Okay, so here we have our window in which we're going to be doing our drawing. Once you've finished assembling your GUI, you need to tell GTK that it's ready to show, and so we say show all win, and this sort of activates things for the next steps we're going to be taking. Um, now let's render our image into that, and that's very straightforward. We just say co we copy that data array A into the window. We don't see anything now, and that's um, so we would actually if we hid this window and then revealed it, but we can also just do that programmatically. So I'm going to say reveal, and voila, here we see our first image. Now this is nice in some ways. If we drag the window around, you can see that the image uh, does what it should. But if you've never done any drawing with GTK before, you might be surprised that if I resize this window, the image actually disappears. And the reason for that is that when you resize a window, it needs to uh, render that canvas again, redraw the canvas. And we haven't, we, we drew the canvas on the canvas manually. We didn't tell GTK how it should do the drawing itself. And so we can inform GTK of that very easily by just defining a draw method for it. Um, there's the, can, the canvas C has a field name draw. We can assign the function that it should render to that field just using the do syntax of Julia. So we say draw C do widget. Widget is now the, the name of the canvas that we're passing in into this local function. And so we just copy onto the widget that same global data right there. And now here we see our window. And unlike before, now if we resize the image, you can see that it refreshes it. You'll notice, of course, that the pixels don't stay square. GTK actually has a nice and very easy to use aspect frame uh, that would allow us to make it always be square. Um, it's not hard to use, but today we're just going to keep things really simple. I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, so this is a good uh, image. It's nice to see it, but if we wanted to zoom in, for instance, and see some detail, we don't really have an ability to do that. If I click on the image and drag, I don't get a rubber band. I don't zoom in. Nothing interactive happens there. It's just a static image. We can add that kind of interactivity, and that's really where the GTK Utilities package comes in. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to essentially establish the, uh, the, the, the core uh, ingredients we need for panning and zooming. And you do that with a simple function called pan zoom. And we're going to be panning and zooming on this particular canvas C that we've created. We also want to specify what the sort of outer limits of the viewing area are in the coordinates in which we care about them. And so we're going to specify the entire width of that array. And this will just essentially keep the whole panning and zooming thing in bounds, not exceeding the area of the image. Now, this by itself doesn't add the interactivity, right? If I click on the image, nothing happens. But what it has done is it's added some information, essentially attached it to the canvas itself. And you can get at that information with this container object called GUI data. We can look at all of the data uh, that's associated 
associated with that canvas C this way here. What you can see is this pan zoom function created these four properties, if you will, of this particular canvas. The X view and the Y view encode the current zoom region, and the, the corresponding ones with limits uh, encode, uh, you know, what's the outer limits of, if you will, of the viewing area. Um, we also need to establish the interface by which we're going to be performing panning and zooming. And so here we, uh, my favorite one is of course to use the mouse. And so we'll turn on panning and zooming with the mouse. We could specify various options here that control which buttons get used and which modifier keys uh, happen and some specifics about how the panning and zooming works out. But we're just going to go with the default settings right now. Okay, so that's turned on. And you can see that something now has happened. If I click on the image and drag, you can now see a nice rubber band gets created. But but if I let go, hmm, surprisingly nothing happened. Well, it's not really nothing. If we take back a look again at this GUI data structure, now you can see that the X view and Y view variables have been updated with the region that we selected. But it didn't update on the screen, and that's because our draw method doesn't take account of these variables here. If I double click on the image, that's the command to sort of reset the view, the view region to the maximum. So I double click on it, I look again now at the variables, and you can see I'm back to where I started. So let's define a draw method that actually respects these variables. So again, we're going to replace the existing draw method with a new one, do widget. First thing we're going to do is read the value of these variables. So we say x view, y view equals GUI data. C, not C, widget, that's the local variable. Uh, X view, GUI data of widget, Y view. Okay, now we want to establish some coordinates on this canvas, and these are the, the viewing, the fact that the over the whole canvas area, the viewing area now is going to consist of these, of the ranges specified by these X view, Y view variables. So we say set chords. This is again a relatively low level command. This you have to run on though, it's called the graphics context of that, and you can read about this a little bit in the GTK help, um, and uh, maybe to some extent in the graphics. Um, and so uh, we run that on, and we just simply specify that the coordinates should be given by X view and Y view. And then finally, we need to snip out the region of the array that we want to plot over the span of this image. And um, by this will just. Um, uh, snip this out of A. Since, as you can see, these can be floating point numbers, we better convert them to integers. So we're going to say floor int um, x view dot min to seal int x view dot max, and likewise for the y vertical component int uh, y view dot min seal int int y view dot max. Okay, so we've snipped that out. All we have to do now is copy it onto the widget. All right, so let's see, how well does this work? So now we click and drag, and voila, we have a zoomed in region. More than that, we can pan. If we scroll the mouse wheel up and down, you can see that we're panning in the vertical direction. If I hold the shift key down at the same time, then I pan in the horizontal direction. If I hold the control key down while I'm panning, then I zoom out. And I can zoom in also, of course, by scrolling the mouse in the other direction. One of the really nice features I think about this is that the focus is placed on the position of the pointer. So if I want to zoom in on this feature, I sort of target it with my mouse. If I want to zoom in on this feature, I target it with my mouse. Um, if you don't happen to have a wheel mouse, you might actually be more interested in using keyboard commands to control this. And those haven't yet been enabled, but we can enable them very easily with just pan zoom key. Again, you can set up specific custom key bindings that you want for the commands you want, but we're just going to go with the defaults here. That is to use the arrow keys. So if I push the left arrow key, now I'm panning to the left. The right arrow key, I'm panning to the right. If I hold down shift, I take full screen hops. So there. Um, and you know, likewise in the vertical direction. If I use the control key and the down arrow, I pan out. If I use the up arrow, I pan in. And in this case, it always pans in on the center of the screen rather than the position of the pointer. All right, that's about it for this. So you can see very easy to set up panning and zooming interactivity. A few other extra points to make. This GUI data, of course, you can assign, you can attach any data you want to um, any objects in your graphical user interface, and that's often very useful when you're writing graphical user interfaces. Another thing to point out is that while I demonstrated this for a pre-computed raster object like that uh, image, which was just basically an array, you can also just use continuous 
those drawing commands with the same framework. And as a fun demonstration of that, I'm going to show you one that I've pre-prepared. There's really nothing different about this one than the other one, I'm, uh, so I'm not going to bore you by walking you through the steps. The steps are basically all exactly the same commands I just showed you, but in this case, Rather than taking an image, this is actually essentially using a function um, to, to render it. And what I'm rendering here is a Julia set, appropriate for the language we're making use of, of course. Um, and one of the nice things about this is this demonstrates the sort of continuous zoomability, if you will, of these sort of fractal objects here, right? So I've zoomed in many, many times. You, those original pixels weren't represented in the raw image that I, that I provided to this, and they were all computed on the fly with each individual update. And you can see that despite the fact that, you know, this is, uh, Julia sets often, you know, take a little while to compute, this gives very nice uh, high performance uh, uh, interactivity. Okay, that's all for today's demonstration.